Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has set out the broad outlines of his approach as Prime Minister on foreign policy issues. Clearly, he emphasized Iran and that is where he drew huge applause in praising the Iranian women for the resistance to authoritarianism of a theocratical kind. He also praised Iranian footballers for daring to express themselves politically through the World Cup and risking the consequences they could very well face on return to Iran. And of course, Ukraine inevitably, he said he will continue to support, that Britain will continue to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Again, he won huge applause over that. He described his experiences on his visit to Kyiv recently, described the kind of aggression that Russia has been aiming at civilian, including civilian children. And that is the kind of example that he held out by way of showing that support for Ukraine is humane, a humanitarian support that is getting political and military expression and will continue to get support from Britain and allies of Britain that countries like Germany, others are stepping up now to confront Russia in Ukraine and to back Ukraine against Russia. In Kyiv, I just saw how Russia's focus is shifting from bruising encounters on the battlefield to brutalizing the civilian population. It was written in the scarred buildings and the piles of rubble lining the streets. In the stories of the first responders I met, from liberated Kherson, from the torture chambers to the booby traps left in children's toys. As the world comes together to watch the World Cup, I saw how an explosive device had been hidden inside a child's football, seeking to make it a weapon of war. It defies belief. So be in no doubt we will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. But he said the future is the Indo-Pacific. And by that he didn't mean China. He spoke of China. He spoke of the need to confront and even contain China. But he said that will also include by diplomacy and dialogue through engagement rather than just confrontation and engagement that he said will not just be rhetorical, uh, rhetorical expressions, but through robust pragmatism, as he said. Now, let's be clear. The so-called golden era is over along with the naive idea that trade would automatically lead to social and political reform. But nor should we rely on simplistic Cold War rhetoric. We recognize China poses a systemic challenge to our values and interests, a challenge that grows more acute as it moves towards even greater authoritarianism. Instead of listening to their people's protests, the Chinese government has chosen to crack down further, including by assaulting a BBC journalist. So he is clearly on the path to taking a firm line, but a tactful line. He said the future of growth is in the Indo-Pacific. He mentioned Indonesia in particular as a young and growing and rapidly succeeding country. He said by 2050, half the growth in the world will be in this region and in that context he mentioned in passing that Britain is pursuing the free trade agreement with India indicating thereby that that talks those rounds of talks are on track we did not specify exactly what is lying ahead this was a succinct speech setting out the broad strokes of the policy but clearly we could expect progress on that and a signing of the FTA reasonably soon, going by the repeated affirmations that have come from Rishi Sunak. We are now looking at a position where the British government is taking a very broad and a very bold uh, approach to uh, several issues that are confronting Britain and the world, where Rishi Sunak is setting out a course where Britain will make its moves both tactfully and firmly. And in passing, though, we do have to note as a footnote, uh, Rishi Sunak also said, and this he said for the first time, that he grew up in Southampton. He was born there. His parents, he said, 
came to Southampton via East Africa from the Indian subcontinent. This is the first time that he has referred to the origins from the Indian subcontinent. We know that the family uh, is from Gujrawala, now in Pakistan, and that was, of course, in the days of undivided India. So, an acknowledgement there by way of an Indian footnote that no doubt will please uh, a lot of Indians, but what we do have now from Rishi Sunak is a very bold uh, approach to foreign policy issues that Britain will pursue under his charge.